is the winged figure that adorns Honda's first motor? Stay tuned because we've got that coming up and more. Today we're talking about the Honda Motor Company, the world's biggest manufacturer of motorcycles. Our story starts in 1948. Soichiro Honda is visiting the home of a friend when he happens to see a small generator engine. Thousands of these engines were manufactured during the war to power the wireless radios of the army. This tiny engine gives Soichiro a big idea. He sells most of what's left of his old piston manufacturing company to Toyota to finance his new idea. But he keeps one of the only buildings left standing and sets up the Honda Technology Research Institute. So what's his idea? Well, he thinks how easy it would be to use these small engines to add some auxiliary power to a bicycle. It's not a new idea. People have been attaching auxiliary power to bicycles for a long time. This was exactly how the first motorcycle was invented way back in 1867 in the United States by a man called Sylvester Howard Roper. The Roper Velocipede was powered by steam. Its inventor sadly died from a heart attack in 1896 in the saddle of his motorcycle while racing. Nobody knows if it was the heart attack that caused him to topple over or the top speed of 40 miles an hour caused him to have a heart attack. Good luck on a modern motorcycle at 200 miles an hour. The first internal combustion petroleum-fueled motorcycle was the Daimler Wright Wagon, built by Gottlieb Daimler, the same man who founded Daimler. Many of these brands were being exported to Japan before the war, and there were also Japanese manufacturers in the local market. But things deteriorated in Japan after the war, and bicycles became a common means of transportation. After the war, Fuji brings out the Rabbit, six months before Vespa is introduced in Italy, and Mitsubishi releases the Silver Pigeon, eh, not the greatest name, <laughs> but many people can't afford these machines. So while Soichiro's idea is not new, it's more practical for many people. It's something they can afford. He gets working on the prototype. He grafts the generator engine to the bike and uses a hot water bottle he finds in his house as a fuel tank. This one horsepower rotary valve two-stroke 50cc modified engine is the beginning of the Honda Motor Company. It quickly gets nicknamed Chimney thanks to its tall single cylinder and the fact that it also makes a lot of smoke. Fuel is scarce, so Soichiro makes homemade turpentine fuel from tree pulp. This isn't the first time tree fuel is used to power motorcycles, and we know it won't be the last, but it will be another 50 years before anyone looks at the pulp industry as a source of biofuel. Suichiro's wife, Sachi, is the first test pilot. Suichiro wants to see if it's suitable for women. She wears her best manpa, which are baggy trousers, and test drives it around the main streets that are crowded with people. Her manpa gets dirty from oil. Suichiro fixes the problem. Then he buys as many of the small radio generators that he can find. Once stock of the radio engines starts running out, Suichiro decides to develop an original two-stroke engine of his own design. He could have copied the design of the small radio engine, but Suichiro does not like to copy things. He wants to create original ideas. The fuel tank is cast aluminum in the shape of a teardrop. The idea came from the cast aluminum hot water bottles. This is the first original Honda A-Type moped. Take a look at the engine. The brand mark of a figure racing across the heavens is only just visible. Can you make out who the figure is? Maybe Honda's logo from 1948 will give us a clue. Now we can see the winged figure. Over the years, the logo changes, but the wings remain. A reminder that Sarichiro was inspired by the goddess Nike, the ancient Greek goddess of victory. In a little over 20 years, a new shoe company in Portland, Oregon, USA, will also choose this goddess for their name. And we all know how it turned out for them. It is something that Honda and Nike have in common. They both found inspiration in the goddess of victory. Now it's August 1949. Suichiro meets Takio Fujisawa through mutual acquaintance. They have crossed paths before when Takio worked at the Nakajima Aircraft Company where Soichiro supplied piston rings. Soichiro is now 42 years old. Takio, 38. They hit off immediately. Each sees in the other something they themselves don't have. Soichiro does the making. Takeo does the selling. Takeo is a marketing genius. 
He has a simple principle. Tell customers the truth. They are a perfect combination. And as any car enthusiast knows, the perfect combination can be pretty important. You get the right combination of fuel and air, you get the most powerful result. This is what happens at Honda. The official start date of the company is 1948. Within 11 years, they will become the number one motorcycle manufacturer in the world. But let's not drive too far ahead. It's still 1949. The D-Type is released. It no longer looks like a bicycle with an auxiliary engine, but is a full-fledged motorcycle. The D stands for dream. So Ichiro is always talking about his dream of Honda becoming a world-class manufacturer. So someone starts calling it that and it sticks. One year later, the four-stroke E-Type marks a turning point for Honda. This is the bike Soichiro always wanted to make. It starts shipping 500 units a month compared to the D-Type, which shipped only about 160 per month at its peak. Then it gets fitted with the third gear and orders rise to 2,000 a month. Three years later, orders are at 32,000. So how does this company move so fast? Perhaps we can find a clue in the company's slogan, which is 120% quality. The idea is that you aim for 100%, you will always miss. But if you aim at 120%, you can achieve perfection. It's an idea that is not conventional. Conventional wisdom says 100% is the best you can do. But so each euro is not conventional. His goal at this point is to exceed international standards. One of the things he does is make a decision to purchase the world's best machine tools. It doesn't make sense at the time because the company is too small. But Soichiro dreams big. How can you exceed international standards without the best tools? He thinks very differently about things. Some companies focus on efficiencies and performance, which works. But Soichiro focuses on joy. Well, I'll tell you the truth, that's how motorcycles are. Oh, he's really into them, it is joy. He writes an essay in the Honda Monthly Magazine for his employees. It's called The Three Joys. Eventually, it will become immortalized as the company's principles. What are the three joys? First is the joy of buying. Well, Americans can relate to that one. This means making products that exceed customer expectations. Second is the joy of selling. This means that those who sell or service Honda products have a relationship with customers based on trust. Third is the joy of creating. This is the pride of doing a job well. The one thing Soichiro doesn't find joy in, it's two-stroke engines. He finds their high pitch sound annoying. Remember, he plays the flute and the harp, so sound is very important to him. So when it comes to the next motorcycle, he insists on having a four-stroke engine. But Takio is not looking for a larger motorcycle to market. He wants a motorcycle that will have mass appeal both in developed and developing countries. While traveling together in Europe, Takio looks for ideas for a new bike. So Ichiro is more interested in racing at the Isle of Man. Hey, I'd be that way too. They see the popularity of mopeds and lightweight motorcycles, which is exactly what Takio has in mind. But the motorcycle will be a 50cc motorcycle. Nowhere else in the world is a 50cc being made with a four-stroke engine. Once again, so Ichiro doesn't follow convention. The design is lightweight, but has a four-stroke engine. The 1958 Super Cub roars to life. So Ichiro's unconventional approach is hugely successful. The Super Cub becomes the most produced motor vehicle in history. It passed the 100 millionth mark in 2017. It is also the motorcycle that transformed the image of motorcycles in the United States and inspires a whole new type of motorcycling, off-road riding. Watch for future videos where we explore how the Super Cub changes the motorcycling landscape in America forever and how, finally, Suichiro's dream of manufacturing a motor car can come true. If you like this episode, please support us by sharing the video.